Yo, what's up, everybody? This is Rap TV. Raza abriendo puertas. The first, first episode coming soon. Beginning of the year. Rap TV. We're gonna be interviewing a lot of people, artists, uh, rappers, everything. We're doing so uh, our first guest, Johnny, no writing zone. So we're gonna ask him a few questions and uh, we're gonna get this started, man. That's right. Southside. Gangsta, gangsta. Southside. Where were you born and raised, Johnny? So I was born right across the border in Yuma, Arizona. And the reason why I say across the border is because right now we're in San Luis Rio, Colorado, Sonora. Which in this city right here, my parents used to live here right before I was born. My mom went across the border, had me, and brought me over here to San Luis as a newborn. After some time, we moved to East LA, right off of Whittier Boulevard. And then after that, we moved to Santa Maria, came to Yuma. And then um, after that, my parents were always working. They were hardly ever home. I'm the, I was the last child. My brothers and sisters, they were all married and gone out of the house. So the thing is, is that every Christmas and in summer break, my parents used to send me to Santa Maria's because there was family over there that would be able to watch me. And then when it was time to go back to school, they came, you know, brought me back. Um, there was a time where I actually went to Lompoc Middle School too. I kind of loved it, but uh, I ended up coming back to Yuma. Uh, moved quite a bit, moved to Sacramento, went to Santa Maria to live with my big brother. And then I came back to Yuma in 2005. Um, and I've been here ever since. Who did you grow up listening to when you were younger or listen to right now? Well, when I was a teenager, uh, as far as Chicano rap, uh, what was popping back then was Mr. Shadow, Mr. Little One, Night Owl, Little Rob, uh, Little Blackie, Cali Lifestyle, Central Coast Click, um, Lighter Shade of Brown, and Wicked Minds. And it's funny you ask this question because back then I used to bump this one song that uh, that little blackie did with ODM from Lighter Shade of Brown and you happen to be in it and it's called In the Hood. That song right there, it just it hits pretty hard. The beat just was dope man. It just um it's funny, like you know, I never thought that the day would actually ever come where I end up meeting you. And uh, and the reason why I say is because I mean dude I used to love bumping them jams, you know, it was just as crazy, but uh, just the way things happen, I mean we ended up coming across, you know, each other, we crossed paths and it's been a good experience so far. Um, and what I'm listening to now is uh, the homie Baldacci from LA, the face of LA. Uh, YB, I love listening to YB, the dude's music, it's like he's telling you a story. Um, if you listen to all his music, um, all along he's telling you a story but from different people that are around, uh, around him and um, it, it somehow it just connects with you, the music. Um, you know, you, you listen to his music and every song is like, damn, I know somebody that's going through this, I know somebody that just went through that. Um, I mean, and there was a, a year and a half ago, me and my family were going through something and he released a track, it's called Right. And when I listen to it, it's like, damn. It's like if he was talking about me, like if the dude knew me. And, and it's like, it doesn't matter who you are. If you listen to the dude's music, you connect with him. Hey, Johnny, so uh, what do you do for a living, bro? So right now, I work for the Arizona Department of Transportation. Uh, I work on the maintenance department, which we do inspections on the highway, uh, re report the um, repairs that need to get done on the road. Um, I also um, just became one of the CDL instructors for the state for new hires uh, in our region. I also drive up to Flagstaff up in the winter to go plow snow. When I go up there, there's times that I uh, train new drivers on um, plowing snow get them certified and qualified. The supervisor out there, man, he's just uh, he's just happy with 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 the, well, the work I'm doing out there with them. Um, not to mention, I love plowing snow. They tell me that like, you gotta be one crazy Mexican because nobody out there really likes to plow snow. But me, I'm always calling, hey, you guys need help? And they're like, yeah, sure, you know. So sometimes I'm up there for two, three days. Sometimes I'm over there for one or two weeks without coming home and seeing my family. But I love what I do. Um, other than that too, I'm also a uh, heavy equipment operator. I help um, train new, uh, new employees on operating equipment, 
TI trained, I'm on traffic control. Um, I've also done some uh, safety videos for the state of Arizona, which they're using for uh, training as well. And on top of that, I go home and I work on my lowrider's own hustle, working on my shirts, printing shirts, you know, um, just, you know, and that's basically what I do, man. So my favorite movie, I would say, is Black Dog with Patrick Swayze. The movie's about uh, him having an accident, killing somebody, and it wasn't intentional, but when he gets out of prison, finds out that the mortgage was behind, he's about to lose his house, and uh, so he goes on a mission trying to save his dream. And uh, it's a great movie. I encourage people to watch it because it just it's, shows the ambition. Our favorite book? You know what? I really don't read books. I've never really liked reading. But if there was one book that I say that I would run and read, and, and I would read, I've actually started reading that book several times. I stop. I start all over again. But the name of the book is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Um, the book talks about a formula about how to be successful. Um, and the thing is, is it has different stories. Like one of the stories is the one from Henry Ford. Um, it's a great book. I, you know, I encourage people to read it. It's, it's, it's a great book, man. You know. Cool. What's it called again? Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Any favorite motivational speakers? Um, yeah, um, Jim Rohn is my favorite motivational speaker. The guy, uh, when he's giving out his speeches, he makes it really interesting. He actually makes it, you know, kind of funny too. But when you're listening to what he's telling you, like you think about it, and it's like, man, like it's, like it, it really clicks to you. Like one that he tells you, there's a storm, and two sales guys say, okay, well, first one says. You know what they don't expect me to go out and make some sales right but the second one is you know what this is a good day to go out and make some sales people are going to be home during the storm so two people actually have two different choices one chooses not to go out the other one chooses to go out and that's when you see who becomes successful when they're both doing the same kind of thing nice all right johnny so let's talk a little bit about the low riders own gear so my low riders own gear, like I mentioned, um, when I got into doing videos, I don't want to just sell videos, which I never got the chance to get to that. But I really got into more into uh, printing shirts, and uh, um, now the thing is, is that when I go to shows, I take pictures, I pick the picture that I like, and uh, I got the homie that works with me, uh, the homie Creeper. I tell him, hey homie, look, I'm gonna send you some pictures. I want these put together. Uh, just change out the background. I pick out the background, and uh, pretty much every time I send him some work, the homeboy hits. Uh, he nails it. Um, the latest one he did for me was the Jesus up we got three G bodies three completely different pictures put them all together into one back with one different back one one background um, and then the other dude is the, the homie Frankie from San Pedro and uh, that dude actually created the uh, lowrider zone logo and another logo that um, I'll be mentioning up later but uh, yeah the homie Frankie for San Pedro um, you know, he actually did another one of my designs. The last one he did was uh, Hustle and Roll. Um, and it has a picture of his dad's uh, 64 Impala inside a wheel. It actually came out pretty nice. Uh, I, you know, I love it. A lot of people love it out in the booth too. So, um, but uh, that's as, as far as the gear. It's all my pictures. The homeboys design it for me. I don't have the time. I'm always working, printing shirts. I really don't have the time to sit there and edit the, um, the, the designs. Actually, I haven't even been able to, to edit videos in a little over a year. Uh, people have been hitting me up like, hey, what's up with the videos? But you know what? Right now, the money's in the hustle. So that's where I'm at with that right there. Nice. nice. Uh, so what inspired the folks of the t-shirt designs? I say music and movies. Um, just pretty much titles of music, uh, names, uh, the names of, uh, you know, movies. Um, the pictures that I take, you know, just, you know, grab the pictures, you know, put them on a shirt. Uh, but mainly it's music, titles, or just verses that come out in, in, in the songs, you know. Um, that's my, that was my inspiration to, to the quotes on the shirts. What is your favorite food? My favorite food, I had to say tacos de asada, tacos de birria, pizza, pepperoni, um, and tortas de pierna. 
pero de vieja. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's pretty much my favorite food right there, man. No tamales? Oh yeah, I love tamales and champorrado. That's right. Okay, so um, did you ever sell off a trunk, your merch? Or, you know, wherever you stop? So I um I was able to you know set up a booth at you know local car shows in town, but when I went out of town I you know couldn't really set up a booth. So there's times that you know I just you know ended up selling shirts out the trunk. You know when I go out of town, throw some shirts in the trunk in a basket, and just when I hit the road, and then I just walk around tell people, hey, you know what? I got some shirts right here, and if people liked it. They they supported, bought a shirt, showed me some love. But uh, yeah, like I just like Damien from Fubu, you know, the homeboy started out selling shirts out in the corner out of New York, and he made that Fubu brand just hit hard, and and I'm pretty much doing the same thing, you know, just you know selling my stuff out there too, you know, just like he was, you know, putting in the work, going the extra mile, just hustle the right way. Have you accomplished your dreams? Yeah, I'd say I I've accomplished a lot of my dreams. You know, when I was a kid, I always wanted to be a truck driver. So I ended up getting my commercial driver's license. Um, I'm a snowplow driver. Um, I remember too, I wanted to work for the city when I used to see the city workers. And uh, I ended up beco uh, becoming a state employee doing pretty much the same type of work. Uh, I always wanted to have my own house. I bought my own house. I had my low rider. Um, I got my truck, my SUV, car. I mean, everything that I actually dreamed of actually became true. Do you still have your lowrider? Well, that question always comes up too because people see me going to a lot of car shows and setting up a booth and then I share the memories from me having my Regal. And uh, the thing is, is that um, I was playing around a little too much, got a little switch happy, broke the car, truck caught on fire. And I put it, you know, I got it, took it to the shop, got it worked on, but the dude took a little too long to work on it. And it just got to the time where I made the investment for my business. So basically what I ended up doing is just throwing the car in the back burner, kind of put it on hold, trying to take care of my business. But um, yeah, I, uh, I will be bringing something out to the streets. Can't tell you when, just because I put it on hold just to take care of my business. Um, family comes first, man. What do you fabricate your shirts? How do you fabricate them? I do that in uh, my living room. Got a big ass DTG printer in my living room. Um, I also have a vinyl cutter. So um, I do a lot of my shirts in vinyl. Um, that's basically just the logos and stuff like that. Um, but as far as the actual images, I do them in DTG. That was the biggest investment that I've actually ever made. And actually I made that investment at the beginning of this year at a convention in Long Beach. Uh, which not to mention that I'm actually going to be hitting up that convention again next month in Long Beach um, So that way I can go out there and look for a different type of printer that I do printing on other types of things um, Just you know and just keep going you know keep going with it until I make my business grow a little bit more nice. My goals down the road is make my business a little bit bigger uh, open up a store in town um, and eventually, since I actually learned how to edit, um, I would actually really like to film a movie. Um, that is one of my biggest dreams, and I think that is one thing that I actually can uh, pursue. Um, when? Can't say when. Do I have that dream? Yes, I do. Uh, would I have liked to accomplish it? Yeah, I would really like to do that, but uh, I, would really like to make, I would really like to film a movie one day. Uh, you have a website where we could find your stuff, your shirts, or, or up and coming at anything like that? Well, actually, I don't have a website right now. Um, I am looking into creating a website sometime soon. And the reason why is because of the fact that when people come to the booth, they ask me if I have a website, and I don't. Um, but I am going to look into it at the beginning of the year. Um, and the reason why, too, is because of the fact that... Um, the designs that are coming out recently, I'm actually gonna only keep them on the booth for so long, pretty much a year. When the year comes up that the design came out, I'm actually I'm gonna discontinue that design, but the design is actually gonna be available online. So, and, and the thing is, is the reason why, is because of the fact that one thing that I learned working for the state of Arizona, uh, are 
previous governor, Doug Ducey, he started teaching us um, a process for, for business. And the, what I learned from that, and I take this knowledge home to my business, and the thing is, is you don't want to over process um, your, your merchandise. And so that, and, and you know what, there have been some designs that kind of been sitting there for a little while, but uh, so that's the reason why, you know what, I'm gonna carry the designs for a year on the table, and then after that, I'm just gonna, you know, discontinue it, but when people send, put in an order on the website, then the shirt will actually be pretty much printed on demand. But other than that, I mean, that's pretty much what I have for that right there. Where can they find you at, man? Any, any uh, social media or where they can buy shirts? Yeah, so for now, um, pretty much Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, or, you know, my YouTube channel. Um, they're all under the same name, Lowrider Zone. Um, but mainly just pre, um, just Facebook and, and Instagram, that's, you know, you can send me direct messages, put in your orders for now. Um, but uh, that's just until I'll be able to get the website up and going. So uh, do you like uh, any sports? Do you have any favorite teams? Football is my favorite sport. That's one sport that I'll always watch. Um, my favorite team is the Raiders. Uh, some people, some of you are actually gonna laugh about it, but um, we've had a tough year. Um, it's management. That's all it is. But uh, yeah, I mean, as far as any other teams in 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 football, no, I really don't follow any other teams. I just only keep up with my with my team. That's it. Um, and as far as uh, baseball, I like the Dodgers. That's my favorite team. And when it comes to basketball, if I ever really came across the, having the time and I want to sit down and watch it on basketball, I say it's the Lakers, man. That's right. Raiders up. In behind Sakawe. All right. Hey, so what's the meaning behind Sakawe? <laughs> Sakawe. So uh, a couple years ago, me and my homie Rigo from, uh, from Bakersfield, he's from High Class Car Club, and me and him were pretty tight on, you know, and... So one day he posted a, a, a picture of him and his wife. Um, they were doing something, so I just got in there real quick. and like, hey, suck away, you know, put it in the comments. And then, so from there on, it just kind of like, it just started going. We were going back and forth, tagging each other on Facebook uh, with, you know, just this, you know, silly ass pictures and shit. And, and we're always really like, hey, suck away. And then we put the little emoji with the, uh, with the, um, the smoke coming out of the nostrils, in other words, on the emoji, and you know, but we use it as a meaning of something else. But people actually, uh, people actually think that sometimes we get into we're actually doing this stuff. But no, it's just it's pretty much it's puro pichi cotorreo, man. You know, it's just uh, it's all fun and games. You know, um, I I ended up making some sakaway shirts and sakaway hats. Um, at that time, my son was four years old, and one day he grabs one of the shirts and he goes, "Hey, daddy, I want a sakaway shirt." And that was actually pretty funny, but uh, uh, I mean, yeah, Sakaway was just pretty much a thing that me and my boy Rigo just kind of, you know, started doing, you know, just to play around, have some fun in games. But there really isn't too much of a meaning in it, and anything bad, it's just it's, it's fun in games, man. That's right. Hey, Johnny, what would you tell everybody out there that they're chasing their dreams? Honestly, I would say never give up. Always follow your dream follow your gut and never settle for less and never let settle for average hey so uh, what's the story behind the lowrider zone sign so the story behind the sign you know like i mentioned before the name lowrider zone it was a combination of my passion lowriders and what i do for a living and i actually actually made that design um, of a yellow traffic sign, kind of like how you see the signs on the street that say pedestrian zone. And you see pedestrian zone with the figures in the middle, so I figured, you know what, put in a picture of a low rider and then put low rider zone, it's like kind of catchy. And uh, so I was like, after a while, I just like thought about, you know what, I'm gonna make a sign. Um, I went to a store um, in town that actually does the signs for the city, so I had it made retro reflective. And um, the thing is, is that I hit up my boy Isael from High Class Car Club, and um, he's a badass engraver. And I told him, I was like, hey, bro, like, I want to get this sign made, but uh, I want to get it engraved. 
and I want to get it chrome down. He's like, hell yeah. He's like, you know what, dude? Um, I'll take care of it for you. So yeah, like I got him the parts that he needed, which is pretty much a square tubing and a in a metal base. And uh, he did a badass job. He engraved it, uh, got it chromed out for me. Uh, he did a great job with it. Um, and the thing is, is that when I also made that sign, I wanted to use it for photo shoots, but I only ended up using it for one photo shoot. And it was just a way for me to have it in the background, and I didn't have to put my logo on the pictures. But um, what I ended up just doing is I just put it in the corner of the booth. People are always hitting me up too, like, hey, what's up with the sign? How much you want for it? And I just tell them, nah, like, you know what? It was, you know, something that was made, um, you know, with, with sentimental value, man. And, you know, so I just, um, just have it right there by the booth so people can spot me very easy when they go to the shows and they see that it, I'm going to be at the show and I promote the show. They can actually, you know, spot me that, you know, easier by just, you know, looking for the sign. Nice. Perfect. Again? So what's the best part about starting Lowrider Zone? I would say my favorite part of starting Lowrider Zone is traveling a lot with my family and meeting a lot of great people. I've met a lot of great people. Um, as far as people that are into the rap game, uh, I've met them backstage, like I met Brown Shady backstage, I met the homie Lazy Dub um, backstage, I've met Little Easy E backstage, Dub C from Westside Connection, um, and then, but as far as everybody else, uh, you know, just by taking pictures of their cars and they see the pictures on my social media, or if they see their, their cars on the, one of my videos, uh, I've met a lot of great people. Um, I've mentioned some names, uh, my boy Regal from Bakersfield, uh, Isael from Imperial Valley, they're both from High Class Car Club. Uh, my homie uh, Edgar Barba, he's another badass engraver. Uh, he's out in Palmdale. Um, and then not to mention my favorite fuckers, and I say that because um, when every time I see them, I call them fuckers. I call them fuckers on social media. Um, it sounds kind of brutal in a way, but it's just the way we get along. They see me, they call me fucker, um, but it's uh, my boy Fabian, my boy Pelon, my boy Sal, they're, they're from Good Times Car Clubs, uh, nothing but love for you guys, uh, I love you guys, I mean you guys show me nothing but love, but not just to me, but to my family as well too, um, and then my boy Eddie from um, Delegation Car Club, he owns the Finishing Touch. Um, I mean, there's there's a lot of people that I've that I've met along the way, and they've been very great with me. And so, in return, you know, I show them as much as love as I can, you know. So, Johnny, have you been to other any other events besides car shows? Yeah. Um, back in June, um, a week after I came back from the Albuquerque Super Show, uh, I went and hit up the um, the bike show out in uh, Long Beach. And, and therefore, right before that, I came up with a, a new brand um, that's called Vikla Zone. So basically, it goes for you know for the bikers. Um, I hit it up out there, um, sold a couple of those shirts, you know, uh, the Vikla Zone. But what I actually ended up selling the more over there was actually the actual lowrider shirts. Um, just two weeks ago, I just hit up this show in Indio, California. Uh, it was a um, it was a bully show. Um, my, my boy Omar um, that lives out there, he's from Familia Graphics, he uh, hosted that show, he put it together, had a great show, uh, he had the Yang Yang Twins right there, that was my son's actual first concert, and he loved it, um, the Yang Yang Twins rocked it, uh, it, was, it was a great show man, you know, so shout out to my boy Omar, you had a great one bro. Hey Johnny, so what you got right there man? So this right here is something that I worked on for my boy Brown Shady and the homie Creeper. Um, this is a new material that I just picked up, a new vinyl. And uh, so this is the street fabricated. Uh, Shady said he, you know, he wanted to promote the street fabricated a little bit more. So I figured, you know what, I'm going to hook the homeboy up and uh, make him a new shirt. So yeah, this was just pretty much made last night just for him and the homie Creeper with the new material. Um, but yeah, this is, you know, this is my token of love, man, here, man, for these guys, you know, for all the love they've been giving me and all the work they've actually done for me, too, as well. Nice, nice. Okay. All right, Johnny, any, uh, you have any mentors? 
Yeah, I do. I have a couple of mentors, and I'm, you know, been very blessed to have these mentors around me. Uh, they've been very great. Uh, it's been a blessing. Um, one of them is Martin Ramos, um, the homie Lazy Dub. He's been teaching me quite a few things. Uh, one thing he's been really teaching me is like, you know what? Don't eat until you're done hustling. And the the thing about that is, the more you hustle, the hungrier you get. And but you don't eat until you're done hustling, man. You know that's how you get a good grind. Uh, another one of my uh, mentors is my boy Brown Shady, teaching me some good stuff on how to work stuff with with so social media. And um, my boy Chewy from New Class Car Club, he's been the brother that I never had. I mean, I has you know two brothers, but my boy Chewy has treated me like his little brother. Um, He's like the brother, like I said, he's like the brother I never had. Um, when when I'm getting out of line, he, he puts me on check right away. Um, and, and it's cool. I like that because my brothers didn't actually put me on check when I was getting out of line. And, and Chewie's like, hey, you know, he calls, a, he calls me out on it right away. And, um, but, you know, he's also been teaching me a lot of great stuff along the way, uh, giving me ideas and things like that, so I got nothing but love for you guys, you know? So it's, you know, uh, I'm very grateful, um, very blessed to have you guys. Um, big shout out to you guys, man. Yeah. Hey, so Johnny, so how do you keep your kids involved with the low energy, you know, how are they involved? Well, so my 10-year-old daughter, she has a pedal car that's called, uh, uh, it's called Heroes. It's a tribute to 9-11. Her grandpa built that one. Um, it's candy apple red. It has some murals from 9-11. Um, it's a really nice car. Everything in there is engraved. I mean, man, honestly, I think that pedal car has a lot, a lot more money than my car does. But um, my daughter does just, that's her thing. She loves her pedal car. She loves going to the shows. And uh, a lot of the big shows that she goes to with the pedal car, she takes first place, like in Vegas, uh, Super Show, she took first place. Arizona Super Show, she took first place. The show in Ventura, she took first place. I mean, it's a badass, you know, it's, it's a badass pedal car. Um, I do have it on a reel on uh, my my Instagram and Facebook pages. You guys can look it up right there. Um, it's it's a really nice, um, it's a really nice pedal car. And as far as my son, everybody loves that fact too that when I'm walking with a camera on my hand, my son's walking right behind me or next to me with another camera. Um, that camera that he has is my actual first GoPro that I started recording with. Um, I he wanted to get involved with it, and you know what? It's it's a father and thing, uh, father and dad thing, you know. So it's like you know what? It's I'm doing what I love to do, and I got my son involved with me as well, and he loves it. Um, but not only that, people love seeing him walk with me with his camera and people are taking pictures or video of him. When I duck down or lay down on the floor to grab a picture of a car or something, uh, he actually lays down on the floor right next to me too. And so he's taking his shot and people actually love to see that. You know, people tell me like, dude, you're doing the right thing with your kids. And uh, you know what, like I'm just trying to show my, my kids the positive things. Um, and if my son's not walking around with a camera, he's walking around with a stack of Lowrider Zone stickers and he's just hustling, selling them. I mean, can't forget, we went to a show in Superior, Arizona. Richard Ochoa uh, put that show together. And uh, so we drove up over there. And my son, uh, honestly, I couldn't believe it, but in one day, my son made a little over $400 just selling the Lowrider Zone stickers. How did he do it? I don't know, but you know, he got a good hustle. And, you know, it's just, it's it, it's very fun to have my kids involved with all this, too. You know, it's like, uh, you know, it's like a dream come true, man. Honestly, um, the purpose of it is kind of uh, pretty much, uh, it's like playing the lottery. You know, you go buy a bunch of different tickets. You never know which is going to hit. Uh, I got my Lowrider Zone gear that's been out for a few years. Street Fabricated just came out. I got another brand coming out. You never know which was gonna hit, you know. You know, it's like they say, sometimes you gotta play the only chips you got, man.